Right, Darren, how long have you been a pigeon fancier? Around 23, 24 years. Is that, um, you, you keep show races all that time? Oh no, started show races in, started keeping a few show races in 95. Really started showing 97, 98 season. Yeah. It's only about four or five years I've been proper doing it now. So you was a racing fancy before that? Yeah, racing, yeah. How did you get into <laughs> show races? Um, finished show, uh, racing pigeons with, with work and that, like, it was just too, it was too quite time consuming really. So, looked at something else, um, maybe had a break for about four years, then went into the show pigeon scene now, bit in the paper from Jimmy Fitzpatrick. Wrong right. Year, and walked ever since really. So, it's less of a workload with these than it is with the racers? Yeah, there's not the training, not going to the club every Friday, Saturday night, there's no training every week and getting up early. Yeah. You know, you see it's a lot less time consuming. What, what attracted you to it in the beginning? Oh, looks I think. The looks? I think when I even had the racing pigeons, I went for the, the looks on the pigeons, the Dell bars and the old boardings and things like that. Right, so you like the nice lookers? That's not the nice lookers, yeah. It's nice to see when you come around in the morning to the shed and see some, you know, big bald headed pigeons. Yeah. That people you people used to have. Is it a very competitive side of the sport? Yeah, it's very competitive, yeah. I mean, everyone wants to win that goes and... You know, it's it's the same as racing pigeons, really. It's right. very competitive, and we all go there to win at the end of the day. Uh, how many would you expect it will sell of the big the big shows like the Comrades? Well, oh, about 2,000 two thousand entries. Two thousand show yeah. races entered. Yeah, yeah. They're very competitive. Yeah, right? It's Blackpool and the Comrades. I mean, Blackpool more, so that's a real big one. So. How does anybody go about? Say, I, say for instance, I myself wanted to start up with show races. What would I do? Um, go to your local, find out your local show racer society, maybe go to a show of a way with a few the local lads. I mean, say the local lads, it might be about, you know, 100 miles sort of circumference of people that are starting, but, you know, there's not a lot of adverts in the racing pigeon, like the, sh like, um, well, like the racing pigeon in the open world, like the racing pigeons are, there's adverts every week, and they for sale and that lot. Yeah. There's not so many with the show pigeons, so you have to get yourself about, really. Right. Get to a show. Can you tell me about any local organisations, uh, show racer societies or...? Yeah, our local show racer society is South Humberside Federation, right. which is um, based in Gainsborough. Gainsborough. We have four shows a year there. I mean, Gainsborough is still an hour from here. Yeah, I was just but thinking... But you've got it's... people coming from Durham, you've got someone coming from Norwich to our society. Are they in that society? They're in that society, yeah. Because yeah. there's only 12 show race societies through the UK and Wales and Scotland. Right. That's pretty wide spread then. Yeah, so, you know, it's, like I say, down in Norwich where there isn't one there, so they come here. So they do a lot of travelling for a little society show. Now, do you need to be a member of a local society to enable you to show at the, at the big classic shows? You do, you do at Blackpool, because there's inter society classes at Blackpool, but the rest of the shows you're all right. Right. But if you want to show the big one, I mean, you don't want to, you, you, for, the ca for the sake of, you know, joining a society and maybe costing you about £3, it's not worth it. You might as well join a society. Yep. Even if you don't show it, you've, you're a member of the society, remember. yeah. I think you've already answered this one as well. But, uh, what's the top show, the top venue? Black well, my personal thing is Blackpool. Blackpool. Yeah. They're, 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 like I say again, every, everybody's there, everyone that keeps show pigeons goes to Blackpool. Does it get any better than that? No. No? It's not going to get, it's never going to get any better than that. Is there any uh, international showing? No. No? There's none of that. Because people that, like, you know, we, we keep show owners, and they call them show owners, show pen races, different countries like America, Germany, yeah. the Japanese and that lot. But they're not like these, they're just totally different pigeons. Oh, right. And so these are their only type that there is of these types, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. The other countries, they buy our pigeons off us for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a put it with it, but they're not the same type. They're just totally different looking pigeons. Right, so they couldn't really compete against each other anyway? No, because they're not the same type of pigeon. No. Cost wise, if I was to come to you and so say I wanted a, a real top notch pair of pigeons just to set me up in show racing, what would, that, what would I expect to pay? Yeah, it's difficult to say really. It depends what they're worth to me and what they're worth to you. I mean, I, I mean it's, it's a difficult one. Does she swing the roundabouts, yeah. this one? I wouldn't sell, you know, I'm here to win, I wouldn't sell my best pigeons right. at the end of the day. We'll say, we'll say a pair, off a pair of your best then. Well, if I sell a pair of young ones, a good pair of young ones, then, you know, what I wanted to sell, I want at least £50 pound a piece from the place. Right. So, um, so what else would I need, i.e. equipment? We know, we'll, we know we've got the loft. I think you have, the loft, yeah, the setup and that lot, I mean, 
you know, your equipment, really, you only need your show baskets, your single pen baskets. Right. I mean, so you know, we're your clots and things like that, you're doing racing minutes, so you'll save a lot of money there, aren't you? But what would you say, would you say it was good? give out half the output initially to set up in show racing. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah, because we, we, we are racing pigeons, a lot more things you need, you right. know, your clocks and your, your other, your lot of baskets and all the, all the things that go with the widow of pigeons, it's, uh, it just seems a lot of money, at the, it's, that pigeon's a lot of money. Yeah. So these are more basic? Yeah. A lot more basic, yeah, sheds with, you have to have aviaries on, you have them sunways on to bath them in there, I mean the aviaries are on for the bath and they don't come out in the aviary that much anyway, apart from summer time, so yeah. summer sort of time. So you, you don't need as much room either, we're racing pigeons now, woodward crops, stock pigeons, woodward ends, you need a big garden, don't you? That's right, yeah. You want to do it properly. <laughs> right, you have a look at one of your sections, Darren. Yeah, we're doing a look first in the, in the old ends. Typical 86 section, deep perches, like saying in the house, like half deep litter and half um, scraped jar. That's the way I like to keep them. Maybe not everyone's choice, but that works for me. As you can see, the perches are not just standard perches, I've, I've made them myself, they're, they're a lot wider and they're sort of they cover the old bird underneath. Right. They're a lot bigger. Um, very deep, that's. Uh the sawdust on the floor. Yeah, well, every night I just scrape the top of it, scrape the droppings off the top and just sit it. It's just done every night like that. Right. Well, that helps keep them in condition as well, clean. Well, as you can see, I mean, yeah, the bath for coming up um, about 10 days now and the feet are all clean out of them, isn't it? Yeah, they look absolutely not immaculate, lot, don't they? a lot of muck on them. What size is this section? 8 by 6 this one. 8 by 6 and you yeah. keep how many in here? There's a few more in here, there's about 15 ends in here. But I normally like to keep about 12, but these are old ends and it's just the excess that I've got that I will keep and it's not a bad section for them. No. What's the covering on the back of the loft? That was the only reason I've done that for, because the back of the loft, they had box perches and like German type perches before and there was mess all down it, it didn't look nice, so I mean, right. I took pride in the appearance of the shed and I just like covered it up. We could see that, yeah. That's nice. I mean, up here, normally I have caravan lights. Like for the summer, there's caravan opening, um, like sunroof opening things up here, but I've covered them in because it's show season. And, oh, right. And they don't need them open after the rain. But in the winter, they're always open. In the summer, they're always open. Breeding, typical breeding season. Um, how many youngsters would you breed? 60 to 70. 60 to 70. Yeah. Right. Do they, uh, do they rear them well themselves? No. No? But I, but I have to admit, do really, because I ain't got the room to keep. If I could, if I had the room, I'd keep racing pigeons and breed, bring them up. But I ain't got the room, so I've just got to admit, do. Yeah. There's a lot of pigeons you lose throughout the year. Why do you think that they're not so good parents, we'll say? I think, I, I don't know, I think because they're so inbred. Right. I, th I believe it's that. I mean, when you go to these fancy pigeons and you see all these Chinese albums and things like that, they never bring their own young ones up because I think they're that inbred and they do that many things to them. I'd heard of some of the fancy breeds where they've got their old tiny beaks yeah. that they're, they're not capable of no. feeding. So they're that inbred, I just think. I think these are that inbred. They're, they're not like a racing pigeon with a racing pigeon, like you put a racing pigeon into its box and it'll stay there for the rest of its. Yeah, yeah these are in and out of everyone's box, fighting. Right. They're not the brightest thing. <laughs> <laughs> are they easy to pair up? Yeah, they go down pretty well, yeah. The, about sort of at the same as a racing pigeon, eight to ten days your first eggs. I mean, you get some that are slightly the older ones, but they're generally pretty good. Now, what we do, what we tend to do with the racing side of things, winner to winner in the open breeding winners, do you do the yeah, same? No, 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 it's, you, you don't do that, because I like to keep mealers and reds separate. Right. The so checkers and blue, won't, I won't mix them in. And like winner to winner, it could be, they're just totally different for each other. You want looks and then handling, length of keel, um, feathering, colour. You've got to look at all that sort of thing. Right, so you, you, you tend to keep the colours the same when you're breeding? Yeah. Red to red, mealy to mealy. I won't put a red chested, I won't put a red that's got a big red chest with a mealy that's silver chested because she's getting the ackle right. going wrong.